All right, hello YouTube. Today we'll do a uh, the way ye guide. But first, I'm going to put this part on this very beginning of the video because I've heard this question like so so many times the past few days, which is why I use way ye and Ting Yun so much. Okay, surely after I make this video, people will stop asking, right? Most people know that Ting Yun buffs your attack and gives you energy and damage bonus. Right? Right? The second part is what people don't know. When Ting Yun buffs an ally, that ally and Ting Yun does bonus lightning damage equal to the buff ally's attack. When they attack, they do an extra line of lightning damage. When Ting Yun attacks, she does an extra line of lightning damage as well, right? And this damage scales with their attack, their crit, their crit damage, and their damage bonus, right? And since Zui Yi has a f load of damage bonus on a proper team, my Ting Yun was doing 30k damage per arm. Model, and my chat was like confused as shit why uh, this is without buff and i'm also using the herta store light cone so it might take a little bit of turn for the damage to kick up but for example here right and buff here right now when zui Yi attack there should be a lightning damage number that appear and you can see 5k on the crit on the lightning damage number if it stacks up a little bit with the light cone it does more and more and more right 6k 7k, 7.9k on the Ting Yun crit, as you can see, right? Even though Ting Yun has 5% crit rate and 50 crit damage, the damage that she does is scaling based off the character she buff. So usually, all character can benefit from Ting Yun's uh, bonus uh, lightning damage on hit buff, right? But characters like Jing Yuan and characters like Kafka only have like roughly 40% damage bonus on lightning or higher, right? But Zui Yi can get a massive a fuck ton of damage bonus due to her passive converting break effect into damage bonus, right? Which is why, like, every single time she hits, she does a respectable amount of damage, right? It's basically a 24% uptime, 20% more damage, or 30% more damage on all hits, right? 7k, 7.6k, stuff like that. And that's why they do damage, yes? That's why Ting Yun does damage. Hopefully, after I make this video, people will stop asking why my Ting Yun is doing so much fucking damage randomly. I think the team that people were fucking like, hey, why does your Ting Yun does damage was like the, um, when I was fucking farming this domain. But this one also does a lot more damage than usual because I put my Rune Mei there, right? So with Rune Mei, she fucking amplifies all damage. That's why the damage is hilarious, right? But I was running this domain, and then a lot of people molded, right? So buff, buff, pew pew, right? Pew, see? Like, it's like that, right? She just hits once, and something dies, and then my chat is like, what the fuck? Even though I explained the thing for like two days already, man. <laughs> God damn it. I got distracted. Can you explain again? I'm not going to explain again. After this video is up, nobody will ask anymore, right? Surely, right? All right, so let's go for the actual guide now. Enough Ting Yun Zui Yi interaction, yeah? So Ting Yun is 5 crit, 50 crit damage and stuff, right? Same build. I just swapped the 5 star light cone over a 4 star one. So my stats are a little bit lower, but it's still good. All right, so for Zui Yi build, my Zui Yi is 2685 attack, 139 speed, 75 crit rate. 122 crit damage, 112 break effect, and uh, nothing else, right? My break effect is kinda low, but since I keep using her with Rune Mei or Ting Yun anyways, it really doesn't matter. Maybe next patch is gonna be a better light cone for me, yeah? But I'm using this light cone right now, which is the Hertha Store light cone. It gives me 16% attack times 4, right? 64% attack. Alone, she's already 3.4k attack. With Ting Yun, that goes up to like 4,000 attacks. So I'm already overkilling on attack, right? For relics, I am running break and Glamoth set, right? The Glamoth set, I really like this set because uh, it's pretty universal for most characters unless you're looking for more crit rate, right? This shit gives you 12% attack and 12% damage bonus. My current set is, this is the break set. And then a broken set, which is like a one piece, and another broken set, which is a one piece, right? I'm just using that for the stats, right? And then this uh, orb and rope, obviously. They're both on attack, which is not ideal. I think most people should run like break effect on the body piece, unless they're 
being dreamers like me and looking forward to like light cone from future patches or something right you would still probably run break but i like double attack because i feel like her attack is slow still even with double attack right and an attack set so i was trying to go for that ideally the relic set would be um a four piece break or a four piece quantum quantum obviously for the quantum damage and defense ignore which is a really valuable stat otherwise the four piece break does in fact changes your rotation if Zui Yi is the one breaking right which does kind of allow her to get smoother old rotation but then again right it's three right it's okay i think it's pretty decent other than that you can run like uh two break two follow up or two break two quantum those also work so next let's go for traces right i think the most important trace for Zui Yi is this one Zui Yi converts 100 of her break effect into damage bonus maximum 240 percent right this is the reason why you build break effect on Zui Yi and still get a lot of damage bonus right in combat however much her break effect is gets converted into damage bonus here right that's why she have damage bonus on all sources here realistically you don't really have to go above 150 percent but like you don't really have to but it's there if you want to go to 200 if i hit the buff <laughs> how much break do i have here the fucking 300 right <laughs> like anything above 200 doesn't do much so at 300 the damage number doesn't even go that high you know same with like going above 4k attack or 4.5k attack or something right yeah so realistically you really don't need like to build super high damage bonus that's her most important trace right it's not about small trace i think she gets like 37.3 break effect 8 quantum damage and 18% um, health that's pretty nice for her other trace if enemy has higher than 50 percent toughness you do 10 percent more ultimate damage and this this is confusing but so <laughs> this is her talent right whenever you or your ally do damage to enemy toughness bar which is the shield bar right ish you get some karma stack when your karma stack stacks up to eight you do a follow-up attack your ally no matter if they attack 10 enemy or break instantly their shield you always gain one stack from your ally but you yourself if you do a lot of toughness break you can get like two or three stacks right and then this big trace what it means is that you can overstore your karma stacks and that overloaded karma stack will be returned to you after your talent is triggered so sometimes you can do your follow-up attack twice because you have some pre-stored stacks right so that's basically what it is this doesn't trigger as often as you think it would but when it triggers it feels good right let's talk about her other ability her skill is very fucking simple you do damage to a single target and two on the side right Right? your damage ratio is fine they're kind of low but like it's okay because you have this fucking, uh, passive right that converts break into damage your ultimate does damage to a single target and does more damage the more toughness break you do the more shield you reduce from the enemy the more damage you do it's it's okay her ultimate ignores enemy weakness type and with e2 your follow-up attack also ignores enemy weakness type so if you really want to you can bring her into every content right but like one of the reason why i don't do it is really fucking simple where the fuck is it if the enemy is not weak against your element they have a 20 to 40 percent damage resistance to those right the way that zwayi can ignore enemy element those only really work for like maybe weaker mobs but for bosses i still say you kind of want to bring the correct element like zwayi has pretty fucking low damage ratio right so counting it on this is at level 10 right so your follow-up attack does 90 percent three times skill does 140 to a single target 70 to two side enemy and 250 to a single target on your own and about up to 60 percent more damage if you break a lot of toughness bar right realistically her damage ratio is pretty fucking low but this passive is what she's played around right for trace priority do you just level everything <laughs> You just fucking level everything. I don't think one is better than the other. I, I, I don't know. I'll go for skill old talent or skill talent old, I guess.
guess. Maybe you can ignore basic attack. I just level basic attack because, like, why not, right? Let's go for light cone. We talked a little bit about light cone before, and I've talked about this a lot as well, which is like, the destruction light cone is in the unfortunate spot where there's not a lot of good light cone for you to use, like, universally, right? You use this on Zui Yi because, what, it's free, it gives you 64% attack, and when you do a weakness rate, you get some more damage bonus, which is not needed, right? And as for the other 5-star destruction light cone, it's very specific, right? So this light cone is for Clara only, this light cone is for Clara and Blade, this light cone is for Jing Lu only, and this light cone is for Clara and uh, Daniel, right? So aside from Clara, you can't, can't really use much, right? Bob Aeon is just like a better version of the Moles Welcome You, because the Moles Welcome You is a fucking mistranslation. When the wearer does skill, basic attack or ultimate, they gain an attack buff. What they don't tell you is you only get 3 stacks, so if you do a basic, a skill, and an ult, you get 3 stacks. If your character's skill, ultimate, or attack doesn't do damage, then you only get 2 stacks or like 1 stack instead, right? So this is max 3 stack, and you get 1 stack per of this action. You can't use the action 3 times to get the buff, so you will have to use skill, and then ult, and then attack, right? You have to do all 3, right? It's not really that good. Secret Val is pretty much the poster child of like fucking 4 star destruction stuff. The reason why Zweiyi doesn't use Secret Val is that she really does not fucking need this extra damage bonus. She's already swimming in like damage bonus anyway, so it's not really necessary. This crit is fine, but not really. It's 3 turn, only on kill, maybe on farming. This is good for like hook only, right? Wolf walk time is good for like hook only for now. And don't touch this one. I'm so confused though. Why do they make a light cone with blade on the picture and the light cone gives you attack? Like there's Daniel, but Daniel is not destruction. There's blade, but he scales off HP instead. And the healing of this light cone scales off attack. Like what the fuck? The hell is destruction. Okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, alright, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> alright, so for Light Cone, realistically, you run the uh, Hertha Store one, and then nothing else. In my dreams, however, maybe in patch 2.0, there's a really cool 4 star Light Cone you can use. And uh, that's it, really. I'm dreaming too much, alright? Eidolon time. First Eidolon, follow up damage increased by 40%. Second one, whenever you do a follow up damage, you heal by a little bit and your follow-up damage will ignore enemy element. This is pretty good. Your follow-up now ignores enemy element and I'll heal you a little bit. And when you break a weakness, it will be considered a quantum weakness instead. When using ultimate, gain 40 break effect and uh, stacks of your follow-up attack goes down from 8 to 6, right? That's pretty cool. Okay, I don't have E6 uh, Hanya, but from what I know, if you have the picture of it, I'm pretty sure E6 Hanya and E6 uh, Zui Yi is holding each other hands. I think they are. That's cute. <laughs> like this? No. All right. So realistically, I think E2 is what you want on your Zui Yi because at E2, you start to do damage regardless of element. All right, now then, let's try to do a content uh, where I bring the wrong element to the content. All right, it's time to troll. <laughs> it's time to troll. It's gonna be some, uh, some epic damage scam. Am I doing damage scam correctly, guys? Am I doing damage scam correctly? This is right. Yeah? No Bronya? Yeah, no Bronya. Just buff. Just like raw damage, stat buff, no turn skip whatsoever. Let's see if uh, Zui Yi can clear it. I don't fucking do, um, what's the word? Hyper carry team a lot, but sure, right? Get the late again. Why did she basic attack? We had five skill points! No Technically one DPS, one DPS Ting Yun. I mean, you can build Ting Yun full tank, and this works with the interaction between Ting Yun and Zui Yi, yeah, so. And two buffer, yeah. I mean, the only 4-star character that gets really close to 5-star character DPS is QQ. But we all know how QQ does damage, okay? So let's calm down there. 
obviously, I think people were assuming that Zui Yi is gonna be like super strong because of her passive, right? But Hoyo Verse is not stupid this time, I guess. And they made it so that all her damage ratio is kind of dog shit to balance around this, right? There's one good thing about Zui Yi though. If you just started out the game and you get Zui Yi and you just build like break effect and attack without crit, that's pretty universal. That's pretty chill, you know? That's pretty good. I think her skill set is really good for a new player. I, I like that, right? Zui Yi should be given for free alongside QQ and Yu Kong should not be given for free. A new player is not building this character. <laughs> I don't know why though. Bro. Yu Kong should not be given for free. This is not a character that a new player can build or even a lot of people can build. Holy shit. Honestly, if Hanya is a free character, that's pretty comfy as well. Hanya can kind of make, allow a new player to ignore team building a little bit because of her skill. Sort of. Not really. It's pretty chill. Asta is a little bit harder to build. I guess they both require speed, but Asta kind of requires you to like E and basic, depending, right? And for this character, you just unga bunga, right? Pella AI is also fixed. Pella no longer spam E? Really? I mean, my Pella is kind of ass though. She's level 60. Pella has two basic into auto rotation now. Oh, she does basic attack now. Holy shit. She basic attack when we had four skill points. And now we're up to five. Wait! Hold up! Whoa! Whoa! What? That's good! <laughs> Wait, her AI is good now! What the fuck? Hold up! Is it, is it finally time for me to uh, make a Pella auto battle? I can finally make a Pella auto battle team. Pella only press skill when enemy has a buff now. No fucking way! Wait, why am I still recording? <laughs> Wait, Mr. Editor, I'm sorry. Don't put this in the video. Don't put this in the video. <laughs> Mr. Editor. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Mr. Editor is not going to die. <laughs> it's been one hour. Is it time for me to build my DPS? Is it, is it that angle? I understand. She says, I understand. All right. <laughs> All right. Maybe that's the next project we're working on.